So Joe Biden was in Missouri this past weekend campaigning for Mini Tuesday when he was confronted by a protester. Now, first, I should mention that when Joe Biden does a rally, he's only speaking for around 10 minutes. He doesn't have the stamina to be president. He's only speaking for around 10 minutes at his rallies. Compare that to Bernie Sanders, who's sometimes doing two, three rallies a day, speaking anywhere from a half hour to a full hour. And here Joe Biden is speaking for only 10 minutes. Now, this is a strategy of his. It's the Joe Biden campaign strategy to limit his appearances. One of the reasons is because people hear Joe Biden and they like him less. So they hide him from the public so he doesn't have any interactions with the public. Another reason is because Joe Biden's in cognitive decline. Look at videos of Joe Biden uh, debating against Paul Ryan. Compare it to any uh, campaign rally that he's done in the last six months to a year, and you'll see that he is not in the same mental state that he was uh, six years ago, eight years ago. And that happens. It's understandable because A, he's getting older, and B, Joe Biden had two aneurysms back in, I think it was the 80s. So these are two reasons that they are limiting the amount of time that Joe Biden speaks in public. One of the reasons that I do not feel that Joe Biden is fit to be the nominee is just because of the character that he is. This protester is one who uh, stated that she had cancer and she was evicted from her home because she had cancer. She couldn't afford to pay uh, whatever bills that she needed to stay in her home because all of the money was going to her cancer treatments. Take a look at this uh, interaction between Joe Biden at his campaign rally and this uh, housing advocate who was evicted from her home when she had cancer. We need a homes guarantee. I got evicted after I was diagnosed with, diagnosed with cancer for the second time. His homes plan is not adequate, and we need a homes guarantee. He said that he would meet with us. He committed to a meeting, and then he put us out and had his staff deny us that meeting. Biden lies! That ain't right! So first off, I want to start by saying, how disgusting is it that Joe Biden sees people protesting him, actively challenging him, and he compares that to a Trump rally. Just because these people are protesting him, he's saying you're just like Trump supporters. You're disruptive, you're awful, you're dirt, because you're protesting me, you're against me, so you're equivalent to Trump supporters. And look at the, you know, the people at the rally are probably more like Trump supporters than these protesters are. Because if you look at the video, they're saying shut up and listen. 
Joe Biden's there saying, be quiet and listen to me. They're the ones acting like Trump supporters. Look how aggressive they are just because these uh, homeless advocates want to ensure that Joe Biden has a strong housing guarantee, which he doesn't, by the way. He doesn't have a housing guarantee at all. His plan isn't good. Second off, when the protesters challenge him, look how angry he gets. Look how aggressive he responds to these protesters because they're challenging him. Look how angry he gets at them. He's actively yelling at them while they're protesting him. Look how, how quick like a, a flip goes off in his brain and he just gets angry. He screams. And that's something that happens often with Joe Biden. Look back at the debates at how he had conversations with Liz Warren, where he's like, I got you those votes. I got you those votes. I'm the guy who did it. Something happens with Joe Biden's brain where it just flips and he starts yelling and starts getting angry. I don't know if this is a campaign strategy to show that he does have the mental fortitude to go against Trump. But when you're going against people on the same side as you, who's actively challenging you to make your platform a stronger platform, that's not a good look. It shows you don't have the mental fortitude. It goes completely against this unity idea that you're trying to build within the party. And lastly, I think I want to point out that there, Joe Biden says that I promise you that I'll meet with you. He says, I'll, I promise you. And what happens? Oh, Joe Biden's gone. Where's Joe? Hiding Biden. He promised these protesters that he would meet with them after the rally is over. He said, shut up now. I'll talk to you later. And he just disappears. He just, dis he's gone. He's gone. Where is he? His staff is like, uh, yeah, I don't know what to tell you, but he's not here anymore. I don't know where he is. He's not here. A broken promise. These people who are actively challenging you, who have experienced real problems, just put yourself in this protester's shoes. Having cancer, having all of your money go to cancer, being homeless because you don't have any money to pay your rent or to pay your mortgage or whatever it is. Jeez. Joe Biden is not fit to be the candidate. And I think this is especially highlighted when you look at who he's running against. To me, the choice is obvious. To me, you have someone that's fighting for a living wage, someone that's fighting for Medicare for all. And by the way, this is one of the only modernized countries in the world where you have to worry about going bankrupt because you have cancer. That doesn't happen in France. Doesn't happen in Germany. Doesn't happen in Sweden. Doesn't happen in Norway. United States is one of the only places that you have to worry about that. We have to worry about going bankrupt because you have cancer. And you have to worry about being homeless because you don't have the money to pay for your cancer treatments. It's a shame. It really is. To me, the choice is clear. Bernie Sanders, 100%. And the sad reality is, the way things are looking, Joe Biden is going to be the likely nominee if you know things end up poorly this next Tuesday and... All I can say is we have to keep on fighting. We can't lose hope that uh, that Bernie Sanders could pull this one out. Bernie Sanders has always been the underdog. I think he likes to mention how he either won his uh, one of his campaigns by three votes or he lost the campaign by three votes. Every vote counts, and we have to keep on fighting because this guy Joe Biden is not going to fight for us. He's going to make promises, and he's going to break him just like he did there. Look how easy it was for him to do that. So we have to keep on fighting and make sure that Bernie Sanders is the nominee. Let me know your thoughts. Leave a comment down below in the comment section. And subscribe to join the political revolution against mainstream media. This, this interaction, this confrontation, you're not going to see it on MSNBC. You're not going to see it on CNN. So this is the place to get it. Independent progressive media. Follow me on Twitter at PathForwardYT. And we'll see you next time.